Alrighty, now what we're going to do is look at some graphic elements and how to add them into our design here. Now they may not work with the ones I've got here, but I'm just going to show you the process so you can apply it to your own design. So from within SketchUp, we need to go File, Import, and we're going to, ch mine's in my My Pictures, so you need to navigate to the place wherever your picture is. And so here's the picture that I chose before, and if it's not showing up, it could be because down the bottom you're trying to import a SketchUp file. You need to just go down to All Supported Image Types. So there's an image type. I click Open, and it hangs onto my cursor while I do this. And so basically I just need to click somewhere. I usually put it on the origin here now, which is where the three axes meet. So I guess I'll just do that and I'll move it in a second. Oh, I suppose I can come out this way. Now, how big is it got to be? <clears throat> well, that's kind of up to you. I mean, I'm, at the moment, I'm just going to estimate. All right now, I click a second time to place it. So I clicked once to um, for the first point, and then basically move my mouse until it's the right size and click again. At any stage, if something's the wrong size, you can scale it. This button over here is the scale button, and if you click on it, you can just click on the diagonal opposite corners and make it bigger or smaller. So what we're going to look at here is if I wanted to do, for example, this here. The tools that I would use most commonly are these arc tools. Now, there's a couple through here which are excellent. Uh, the first one I've got is basically the two-point arc. So if I wanted to start, well, actually, let's start with a line, alpha line, click here and click over here. So I've started by drawing that. Now by the way, you can skip this little next step if you want to, but the, 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 the graphics here are pretty low res. If you want to know how to make it high res, watch this little bit. You just go into Window Preferences here, and it's in uh, Extensions, no, uh, where is it? OpenGL, and you use Maximum Texture Size. Now I've already got that on, but yours might be off. So if you've got a really low-res image, just come into the System Preferences, go Open GL, and click make sure Use Maximum Texture Size is checked. All right, so, and that'll give you the best resolution you can get. So that line, that was pretty easy. So now what I'm going to do, though, is just do a, a an arc here. So, uh, Tools. Probably should have looked at this before. Draw Arc. Okay, well, it's basically just a three-point arc. I thought there might have been a tangent arc or something. Anyway, use your zoom tool for this. So if I click along here, okay, now it's wanting to do... That's a little bit weird. Oh, because it's doing a three-point arc. Okay, so that's the first point, that's the second point, and this is the third point. So you can do this a couple times. Like if the arc starts to change direction, then you can do it again. So if I clicked here and did another one and hopefully it will <clears throat> the one that I actually prefer is this two-point arc so if you click on there and you can just bring it around just basically move to here and then see where it's green like that that means that it's making a tangent with this arc that you were on a tangent is where they blend smoothly without a noticeable edge so that's probably the best one to use is the two-point arc so if I click on here, click down here a little bit further somewhere on the line, and then this is the first arc, so it doesn't really matter where I put it, but it is important that you don't end up doing it up in the air. So if you go up on the blue axis or something like that, you actually want to make sure that it says on face in the image before you click. It should say on face for that middle point. If it's not on the face, you may end up actually having it curve up in the air, and that's obviously bad because it won't make a 3D shape. Okay, from there onwards, see how the the green line is showing you how it can be a, a tangent if it's on that little blue kind of a shape. And basically, I can just double click here. Tangent at vertex is what it says when I pause. Double click, and it just places it. Let's do the next one. Click over here and see what sort of curve is it going to see. It's basically the tangent is wanting to go up a bit too far there. So I may need to here because obviously my curve goes too high. I might need to just modify this a little bit. Tangent at vertex. Okay, so now it's actually made it as a shape. So 
The same principle as before, don't go push pulling it up yet, even though you could, it's not wise to, because any if you want to make any changes to the shape, you're better off leaving it as a flat object. So you basically just work your way around, alpha line, two-point arc, start on one of them. Who knows, you might be able to do the high note. See, it's a smooth, gentle curve here, and a sharp curve up there. So you probably want a second curve. So the first one, make sure it says on face. Okay, now we'll go here. And as long as it's on that bluey kind of a curve there, it should be blending it in as a tangent. And so you're best off double clicking. Double click will just place it straight away. Don't go from this curve and try and go backwards. I don't think it's going to... Oh, who knows, it might work. Let's give it a go. Click. Okay, so now it's wanting to go up in the air. That's no good. On face. That's good. Oh, it did work. All right. Let's try up here, see how far we can go. Probably around about there. Double click. And see if we can finish this. Double click. <clears throat> And it wouldn't hurt now and again just to look at it from side on and make sure nothing's sticking up in the air. Okay, so that's all good. Alpha line. All right, so I'm pretty sure you get the idea here. By the way, that purple line is perpendicular from where you came out, which is 90 degrees. You may or may not want that. I don't know. Arc. Okay, click here. Let's just start this. That's a pretty weird curve. But let's just start somewhere. On face. There we go. Click up here and see how far I can go. Obviously, the less you can do with these, the better. If you can just make a big long curve like that, that's awesome. What if I can go from here all the way across there? Does it say on face? No, it's parallel. See, this is where it's doing something weird. So just maybe look at it from a different direction until it says on face. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got two. So I think you've probably got the idea of that. That then these things, you can just um, shift, double click, make it a group. You can copy that. I mean, I don't know how you're going to add this into whatever it is, the design that you want. See, this doesn't really work with any of these designs. But uh, you might have a font and a graphic that works particularly well together. You might want to spin it. I'm not sure. Like, I mean, that's where the creative element of this, you know, task comes in that you can try and think about, what can I make this into? You could scale it bigger using the scale button. You know, maybe it's just... M for move, you know, you've got to just work out how can I use this shape <clears throat> to make something that's going to be super awesome. Maybe you don't want this one, you know, <clears throat> and you just want to use part of it. And so then what you probably want to do is bring it up here and start to join it in with, you know, the elements that you've already got. And as per before, see, that's currently there. That's a group, that's a group, and that's a group. So if you want to combine them, hold the shift key, select them all, copy it, paste it over here so you've got a copy of both, and, and then what you can do is just explode it. Right-click and explode, right-click this and explode it, and then these two, you know, to merge it, you just delete this little internal lines here so that you end up with just the outline. Now, I know that looks a bit silly, but you'll work out something that looks way better. Double-click it, make it a group, and if you want to push, pull, once you get to the stage of wanting to push-pull it, <coughs> Let me just move this across a bit. Okay, then just double space bar, double click, get inside it and just, you know, uh, look down from an angle where you can see how high it is and just push it up a little bit. Okay, same with this one, space bar, click, double click, P to push, pull, get it to the same height, you know, whatever you want to do. And so basically, let's check that it's a solid group. Oh, it's not. <clears throat> Why do you think it's not? I'm thinking it could be these little curves, but see now if I delete that, that's a bit of an issue because they're actually deleting part of the curve. I usually like to delete the top here and see what the, you know, oh, look look at there. That's what I forgot. Okay, so little things like that, that can really make a difference. And the best way is just to undo until you get it back to, you know, this point here. I bet if I delete these, oops, I think I deleted the surface in between. That bit. Oh, look at that. They don't seem to want to be. We've got two copies of this somewhere. Anyway, I've I've lost the whole surface shape there. But if you lose the whole surface, all you've got to do to get it back is to draw a straight line of one of these lines. So, for example, if I was to delete that one and just redraw it, 
Okay, so that's done the inside surface there. That's no good. What about this one? Oh, that's done that there. So you just have to work your way, oops, work your way around. See here, it's with the, the inside E. It doesn't want to work, but I've just got to redraw that, and then it'll actually make them separate. This one's probably the same. I need just to find a straight line. Let's say that. And then it separates the inside and the outside. Okay, so let's try it again now that I've got that joined. P for push-pull. Get out of there. Click on it. And it's still a group. Anyway, you see the point is basically you've got to, um, before you go too far, is double check that it is actually a solid group. So that's how you use graphic elements, is just by tracing over it using the line tool and the circle. You could use a circle tool if it happened to work. But I tend to like this, uh, the, the two-point uh, arc one, because once you've got the first one, then you can just basically, it does that blue curve and basically just see where it looks like it's around about uh, like double in double click when you're ready to go click and just move your way around until it sort of finishes double click until it changes direction so that's a pretty cool tool and I hope you can make good use of that to create some design features in your keyrings have fun I thought I might show you just uh, I know I said goodbye but you know here I am again how, you know, this one didn't come up as a solid group, and I thought I'd show you how I've solved it. Basically, what I've done here is undone it until it's gone back to the flat. I can't even see what the problem is. I've actually got this tool here which says, if I, well, okay, it's uh, if I push-pull this, for example, and then I click on it, it tells me that there is one stray edge somewhere. Now, you don't have this tool yet, um, so you can't go and just use a tool like that to work out what's wrong. But I was thinking, how do I fix a stray edge if I can't even see it? Okay, so what I tried doing was just getting inside my group. And I mean, that's a whole surface. If I double click it, it should get that plus all the bounding edges. So I copied that, Control C, come out here, paste it, push pull it, P for push pull, at who cares how long, and then triple clicked it and made it a group. And then it said it's a solid group. Right, so the question is, what was wrong with this in the first place? And I found if I went back into here, double clicked, and went delete, that's basically the surrounding box of that component. And if I draw a box around it, I don't know if you can even see it. Okay, I can't even see it at the moment, but oh, there it is, right in there. Okay, there was a tiny little, you can barely even see. You know, oh, it's right there. It's a tiny little dot of some sort. Oh, there it is. Okay, now I don't know how far zoomed in I am. If I select that, the length of that line, it's got to be tiny. But tiny little things like that can make it, if I zoom out, you can see you can't even see it by the time you get to there. So the way to solve it seems to have been, if it's not coming up as a solid group, is just get it back to the flat. If you can find, the, you know, to get actually a surface like this that seems to be the whole thing, double click it, copy it, come out here and paste it, and then hopefully you can push pull that, you know, to, oh, it's a bit tall, but anyway, triple click it, make it a group, and just see if it says a solid group. And if it is, yeah, you've done well. Yeah, so hopefully that helps, and that's all I'm going to say now. I won't be coming back, so see you later. Um, yeah, really, have fun.